this is all about levels of development and how we measure the level of development of certain countries. So first, simply a, a really simple definition of development is the quality of life of the people in a certain country. Uh, it's probably more complicated than that, but for our purposes, just know that development means quality of life. And there are three main levels of development. First, we have what are called less developed countries, or LDCs. Those are the lowest level development countries. They have the lowest quality life out of all the countries of the world. Uh, the middle category is known as newly industrialized countries, or NICs. Uh, they have a middle level of development. They're kind of in between the LDCs and the MDCs. And finally, we have more developed countries, or MDCs, and they have the highest level of development of all the countries in the world. So let's look at how we measure development. We look at socioeconomic indicators. What socioeconomic means is simply a mix of social, hence socio, and economic, obviously like money related things. Uh, that's why we call them socioeconomic indicators. Uh, we look at things like GDP per capita, uh, the infant mortality rate, how many babies die per 1,000 born uh, before the age of one. Uh, your birth rate and your death rate, which will be known as the BR and the DR. Uh, literacy rates, the definition of, of being literate is that you can read and write in your native or first language. Uh, and then the unemployment rate, the number of people that don't have jobs but are looking for work. And finally, uh, also the number of doctors. There's a lot of other indicators of development that can be used to figure out things about a country, like number of telephone lines, uh, percentage of internet access, the number of McDonald's. There's all sorts of really interesting stats that you can look at, but these are the basic ones that we'll be dealing with for right now. Now, the United Nations, which is the United, the United Nations, is the basically the organization of all the countries in the world. Uh, they have came up with a way to rank countries, and that's called the Human Development Index, or HDI. I'm going to be referring to the acronym or the abbreviation HDI a bunch because it's just too long for me to say Human Development Index, and I'm lazy. I'm sure you can relate. Uh, so the HDI is a system used by the UN to rank countries by their level of development. These indicators in the HDI, or what the UN uses to rank countries, are the following things. Health, mainly life expectancy at birth. How long a person can expect to live uh, from the time they're born, ba where, based in wherever they live. Uh, another thing they look at is education, mainly the number of years children are in school in certain countries. Uh, and then finally, they look at living standards, mainly taking into account the gross national income per capita. Remember, anytime we see per capita, that means per person. Uh, your country can range in a score between 0 and 1. The number one country in the HDI is Norway, and they score at a .955. The worst country, ranked 186 in the world, is the Democratic Republic of Congo, with a score of .304. The U.S. is ranked number 3, and I don't know the score right now because I forgot it. So let's get into what these categories actually mean. How a country gets to be known as an LDC, an NIC, or an MDC. First we'll look at LDC characteristics. These, these indicators make up uh, an LDC. They have low literacy rates in years in school. They have low GDP and G&I per capita. That means their people don't make much money. Uh, they have low life expectancies compared to other nations of the world but they have high birth rates, high infant mortality rates, and high poverty rates. That basically means that uh, their population usually is growing. This is where we see uh, the highest population growth in the world because you have a high birth rate, uh, but at the same time you have lower death rates because of the introduction of very basic medical services. Uh, their HDI is usually less than five, but uh, th that's not a hard and fast thing. Like that's not, this can vary. The HDI thing being less than five, it doesn't always apply. Uh, their economy is really based around farming, mining, and very low wage manufacturing jobs. Uh, but mostly it's going to be farming and mining of resources. Uh, some example countries in the world that fall into this category are Haiti, Bangladesh, and Rwanda.
Now let's look at the characteristics of newly industrialized countries or NICs. Uh, they are in between LDCs and MDCs in most indicators. Uh, if an NIC was a person, that person would be a teenager, and so I'm putting on these glasses because maybe teenagers wear these. And I also have car keys uh, because that's like the coolest thing ever when you're a teenager is being able to drive. Um, and so they are kind of the in-between countries. They're not babies per se anymore. Uh, if we're going with that analogy, but they're also not like mature and old yet. Uh, so they are between LDCs and MDCs in most indicators. They have a rising GDP, a rising literacy rate, number of years in school, life expectancy, and number of doctors. Notice the arrow is trending upward. It's not straight up and down because they are improving in these areas. And they're also lowering their infant mortality rate, which means that their medical care is improving. Uh, they're lowering their birth rates because when you don't have to farm for a living and you don't have to mine resources for a living, usually people have fewer children. Uh, and their poverty rate is also steadily going down. Uh, their human development index scores are usually greater than 0.5, but less than 0.8 approximately. Again, these are not uh, set in stone numbers, but generally when you look at these scores, this is where the NICs fall in between. Uh, their economy is really based around manufacturing, and a lot of times you see uh, people moving from the rural areas uh, where they don't have to farm anymore, and instead they go to more urban places uh, to get manufacturing or factory jobs. Uh, an example, some example countries of this are China, Brazil, Mexico, and Malaysia. Now, finally, we have the NBCs, or more developed countries. Uh, I'm going to go with the analogy here uh, that I have a cane here because old people uh, really like canes if they need something to help them walk. Uh, so in an MDC, your GDP and GNI per capita are going up. They're, they're usually very high. Uh, your life expectancy is high. The number of years in school is high. Uh, and your number of doctors are also high. Uh, in your MDCs, though, the birth rate is, is probably the lowest out of any of the three levels uh, because, again, people don't have to have as many children when they don't have to farm uh, in order to survive. Uh, their infant mortality rate is going down because their medical care is, is the best out of all the three levels so that babies often live longer. Their poverty percentage, their poverty rate is also lower than the other two categories. Uh, and in general, your population on the average gets older because you have less babies and people are living longer, hence the reason why canes are probably very popular in MDCs. Uh, also, your HDI score uh, has got to be above a 0.8. And again, that's approximate. There may be some countries that are classified as MDCs that have a 0.75. Uh, your economy shifts from manufacturing to service industries. A service industry is something like a teacher, uh, an accountant, a doctor, uh, a, a lawyer. The, these are industries where you're not physically making anything, but you're providing a service uh, to make someone's life easier, basically. Uh, and, but we do still have manufacturing in this country. We do make things here. Not every single thing we use is made overseas. Uh, some example countries are America. Uh, Canada, Finland, and France.